guys how's it going so in this tutorial i'll be showing you guys how to visualize crystal structures from a dot .sif that is a crystallographic information file using jmol in order to do so you need to launch jmol clicking on jmol.jar file as i told you guys in the last tutorial where i showed you guys how to install jmol and get it running so launch jmol and you will see a window such as this one so the first thing that you need to you know visualize a dot .sif file or visualize a crystal structure is the you know address or the path of the file so just go ahead and click on the you know jmol window that is this black void over here and right click over here and click on the console to launch the console so this is the jmol console and it is a really cool scripting utility with which you can perform a lot of really powerful visualization stuff using jmol so the command we will be using is called load and is basically used to you know load the structure for from any file format such as a .cube file, .xyz file, .zip file, .mol file or any other file. So load is the command for that and then you need to provide the address within the double quotes for the .zip file in order to visualize the crystal structure. But uh, to get the path of the crystal structure there is a really neat little trick that I use. So what I do is I just go ahead and click on the .c file that I want to visualize in this case let's say it is silicon and then I just drag it over the jmol window and what it does is it lets jmol read the you know lattice parameter information from the crystal structure file and also visualize a single atom but this is not really useful for us so therefore I'm only using this to get the address of the you know save file now how to get that address is pretty easy so now if you look at the console You'll notice there's a lot of stuff over here and which is this is basically read from the SIF file and the comments within the SIF file to be exact. So it reads the SIF file and displays all the comments within those on the console. So just go ahead and come to the console and press the up arrow key on your keyboard and it will load up the previous command much like the terminals you see on Linux or Windows. So in the previous command you can see the path of the file it used to you know visualize it so just go ahead and copy the whole path including the you know inverted commas and then just go ahead and copy them and press the down arrow key to get rid of that previous command and now type in load and then paste the you know path of the dot .sif file that you copied from the previous command along with the double quotes now we will you know try to understand what, how and why jmol works the way it does so just go ahead and hit enter and once again you'll notice it only visualizes a single atom but it is able to read the crystallographic information correctly now the reason it is visualizing only a single atom is pretty simple so if you go ahead and right click on the .c file that I'm trying to visualize using jmol and open it using a text editor what you'll notice is that it only contains the atomic positions for a single atom and that is at the origin so here it is so here is the you know atomic position for is for an SI atom at the origin but then you must be wondering how come you know all these softwares are able to visualize all the different atoms from this dot .sif file so that is uh, also explained in one of my previous stories where I told you guys how you know you can read or interpret a dot .sif file so what these software pretty much do is they read in the space group or and then use that information to you know generate the atoms at all the non-equivalent positions using the symmetry operations associated with the space group and as in the case of this particular .sif file that I downloaded from AMCSD you can also notice that the symmetry operations are also listed so it doesn't even need to rely on the space group it just needs to use these symmetry operations to generate all the atoms at the different positions and we'll also be doing that in this particular tutorial but what I wanted to convey by this particular message is that when you whenever you give the load command along with the dot save file the number of atoms you are seeing on your screen is directly related to the number of atoms or the atomic positions provided in your dot save file for example i have another dot save file over here and if i go ahead and open it using a text editor then you'll notice here i only provide the space group as p1 and there's only a single symmetry operation associated with it which is the identity operation therefore I have to provide all the non-equivalent atomic positions in this particular .sif file and this file was generated using PyMedGen. So in this case if I go ahead and drag this particular file 
that is the si.sif file containing the eight atomic positions onto the jmol window and click on yes then you'll notice it is able to you know visualize all the eight atoms so the number of atoms you are seeing on your screen is basically representative of the atomic positions provided in your file however if you are going to be running some calculations or if you are going to be you know using these visualizations to generate figures for your research paper then you might need a little bit more than um, what jmol is doing currently so a common thing you know is which is needed in molecular simulations in particular dft simulations using plane waves is the ability to visualize a single unit cell with all the non-equivalent atoms as well as uh, you know model supercells so let's just go ahead go ahead and load the previous silicon model um, that we loaded with the single atomic position so this is the address this is the load command and just go ahead and hit enter now in order to visualize all the atoms within the unit cell of this particular silicon atom what you can do is you can give one more keyword after the load and the address that is one one and one so what this will do is it will load up all the atoms within the single or the you know within the single unit cell of the silicon lattice so here you can see it is only you know visualizing a single atom at the origin and no other atom at the, the other corners because all those because all those are equivalent to the atom at the origin similarly it is not visualizing um, atoms at one of the faces because um, they are equivalent to the atom at the opposite face so giving this command load address and then one 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 within curly braces what you can do is you can generate a unit cell that can be used for calculations using any plane wave or periodic dft code as you now have the coordinates or the atoms um, lying within the single unit cell now you can also create super cells using jmod so in order to do that what you can do is instead of giving one 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 over here you can even give two here which will basically extend the unit cell two times in the x direction and only one time along the y and z direction so as you can see the red line corresponds to the a axis therefore the unit cell repeated once again along the a direction as you gave the command load address and then 211 similarly if you want to create a 2 by 2 by 2 supercell then you can give the command load address and then 222 two, two within curly braces and hit enter and now you can see that there are you know eight sets of unit cell or atoms um, that are being visualized right now and also um, one thing to be noted here is I already told you guys that within a conventional unit cell of silicon atom and I've told this even in the past tutorials that a conventional unit cell of silicon contains only eight non-equivalent atoms right so therefore the 2 by 2 by 2 supercell should contain like 64 atoms so let's just go ahead and give the command select all and what this will do is it will give us the number of atoms that are present um, within the you know structure that is being currently visualized so as you can see it, it is correct 64 which is what we expected for you know a 2 by 2 by 2 supercell so that is how you know you can model supercells or a single unit cell using jmol and you know you understand how it is working now once you know you have generated the structure you can you can go ahead and save the atomic coordinates by giving the command right and then you know just give any name for you know the structure let's say super cell 2 by 2 by 2 dot xyz so what this will do is it will save the atomic coordinates at this particular address that we are seeing here as a 2 by 2 by 2 dot xyz file so let's just go in and try to open that once so here it is supercell 2 by 2 by 2 dot xyz so let's just go ahead and visualize it in Vesta and see how many atoms are there so as we suspected or expected and um, there are 64 atoms for a 2 by 2 supercell now these coordinates can be used in you know quantum espresso wasp or any other periodic code that you want and you can use these coordinates for a 2 by 2 by 2 supercell and just you know uh, use uh, twice of ABC lattice parameters 
for the letter, for the crystallographic information over there. Now it also brings me to another thing that you can do with JML that is to visualize a supercell. So for now we have you know been successful in modeling a supercell or, or something but there's also another feature in JML that can be useful let's say if you want to create illustrations for your search paper now that feature is a command called or rather a keyword called PAG so if I load up this particular zip file then you already know it only shows a single atom but if I give the command PAG after it what it will do is it will pack the unit cell with all the non-equivalent atoms and this time it is packing it you know with all the non-equivalent atoms and so there are two sets of atoms for each phase and then there are you know atoms at all the corners even though all these are equivalent to the atom at the origin now this cannot be really useful for you know simulations because you are not going to use so many atoms in a simulation because you can only provide non-equivalent atoms within the conventional unit cell so this is not really useful so I'm not really sure what you can use this for but it is definitely useful for creating illustrations within the research paper as now the unit cell looks better as there are atoms at the you know, corners rather than what we saw earlier with this command that is one 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 so this only showed the non-equivalent atoms so if you give packed then it will really help you you know pack the unit cell so similarly for you know visualizing supercells there's a command called supercell and then within curly braces you can give the you know size of the supercell let's just do two by two by two and then hit enter now how this command is different to the previous command where we model the supercell is that this time you will see that the unit cell that JML was drawing it now covers the whole you know system so now you can see that the lattice parameters are doubled and it also says that the cell is 2a 2b 2c and but uh, there is another difference with this structure that is similar to the packed command that we give that we gave earlier where the atoms were you know being duplicated and even the equivalent atoms were being visualized similarly here uh, you will see atoms uh, that are equivalent to other atoms in the structure so again this you know structure is not really useful if you are going to run a quantum espresso or a vast calculation where you only need to provide the atomic positions for the non-equivalent atoms within the conventional unit cell so I'm not really sure how you will you know want to use it in modeling but definitely it is useful for you know creating illustrations for research papers where you would probably want to like show the atoms uh, you know covering the entire unit cell rather just a part of it and uh, yeah so that is pretty much it and the last thing that I like to cover is some commands related to the unit cell so you can even you know, turn the unit cell on or off by giving the command unit cell without spaces and then off so it will not you know stop visualizing the unit cell and then you can turn it back on by giving the command unit cell on and then also if you are only visualizing a single you know unit cell then it is also really useful to give the command um, let me just visualize a single unit cell with only the non-equivalent atoms rather than you know the copies at the corners so let's just use this particular system now this feature is really useful and I use it a lot so what JML can do is it can also visualize the primitive unit cell corresponding to the given conventional unit cell so in this case we have you know a cubic unit cell and if you give the command primitive then you'll be able to see the primitive unit cell for the silicon atoms and here it is so it is really interesting you know to me so here you can see that the primitive unit cell is kind of a rhombohedron kind of thing sorry if that's not the correct word but what I mean to say is that all the you know lattice um, parameters are equal or rather the lattice vectors are equal and the um, the angles are 60 degree or something so this is uh, the primitive unit cell for a silicon crystal and also you can see that it is you know not really um, just visualizing the non-equivalent atoms there are quite a few uh, equivalent atoms being visualized such as the atoms at the you know corners so they are all equivalent but still uh, the way this works is it basically uses the 
conventional unit cell parameters and then use that to show the unit cell the primitive unit cell but then the atoms still remain there so uh, there's not much you can do about it but still I mean it's really useful to visualize the units primitive unit cell and then you can delete or you know and decide which atoms you want to show or not and you should also go ahead and check out if this unit cell is correct or not although I'm already giving the answer that it is in fact the correct primitive unit cell for the silicon lattice and then there are a lot of other cool commands for unit cells such as you know um, by you know you can displace uh, the unit cell by giving the command offset or you can center it in a different way or, or something or you can change the unit cell uh, the width of the unit cell lines so there's a lot of stuff you can do by giving the unit cell command and there are also some commands related to supercell so I'll make sure to add the link to these documentations in the description down below so that is pretty much it and you can come back to the convention with cell by just giving the command con sorry um, conventional and then this will take you back to the convention unit cell so that is pretty much it. I hope you guys learned something new from it. And in case you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a great day.